All right guys, what is going on? This is a preface to the video. Um, yeah, this video is about 70.3 Indian Wells, which I just completed probably about two hours ago. And the race went absolutely terrible. And so my hope was that I was going to race well and I was gonna have this like pre-race vlog race weekend style video and then we were gonna capture it, you know, capture that and then, you know, get as much of the race as we could and be able to like, yeah, deliver this cool video about like an awesome race because I actually was feeling decent going in, but the race went absolutely terrible. And so I think I'm just gonna proceed with the video as I had originally planned, just walking everyone through sort of like the two days leading into the race and like everything I got up to, everything that I was like eating and preparing and, and yeah, just trying to like set myself up for my best day. And then I'll, yeah, lay over me talking through the race, um, which went bad. So if, if you don't wanna hear that, um, skip the video. If you do want kind of like the raw and authentic, um, yeah, version of, of events. Um, I'm gonna try and do my best to tell that story here and hopefully you can take something away from that because you know not every race is gonna be your best and uh, I've got some thoughts about this one. So stay uh, tuned and, and stay locked in if you wanna hear more and we'll get into the video. Afternoon in Palm Springs. Made it. It is 3.31 p.m. and what am I doing? Currently sitting outside the Airbnb, mobilizing my body before I go run and waiting for the Airbnb door to be unlockable. And yeah, we're here for 70.3 Indian Wells and flying in late, trying to maximize my altitude gains and uh, yeah, just generally keep the vibes nice and chilled. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to the race this weekend. Try and bring you guys along. We'll see what activities we get up to. All right, so here's the scene. Got the foam roller, pavement, all the stuff. Said unlockable door and unlockable door. That one. Dad's here, as one might expect. And I got the food. We're just getting, uh, getting ready to roll here. All right, successful entry to the Airbnb. Bags are in. Dad's unpacking the groceries. Just quick check, make sure everything's in there. Indeed it is, so we'll figure this mess out later on. But uh, for now, going for a run. All righty, made it out on the run. Uh, sunset jog here. This weather is absolutely immaculate. It's just like 65 and dry and not a cloud in the sky. It's freaking beautiful. And yeah, just really enjoying this run. I've only got 20 minutes, but I want to do more. I'll listen to Coach David though. And uh, yeah, gonna get this run done and then go back, build the bike, and then it's pizza night. So looking forward to that. Saturday, day before the race it is uh, 7 12 a.m. So I'm on mountain time up in Adam early this morning, and we're in the most beautiful parking lot of all aquatic centers in the facility <laughs> with all the palm trees here. I guess it is uh, Palm Springs. Anyways, we're here at the pool this morning getting uh, probably about 30 minute, 30 to 40 minute swim in. Um, yeah, just a couple 200s and get the body, yeah, woken up a little bit and then a full day of activities today. It's gonna be a pretty full gas boat. Try and take you along for it and uh, yeah, generally just enjoying it. Dad's obviously here. See if we can get him in the water. <laughs> we're at the pool. Absolutely incredible pool here. And just did a warm up five 300s. Um, last one with a couple pickups, and now main set two by 200. Be mellow main set today, which is great. And uh, yeah, feeling all right. The two point. Wow, why did I say it like that? <laughs> Just I turn the camera and forget how to speak. <laughs> yeah, overall felt pretty decent. And now on to Iron Kids. I am chose the chosen one. 
the, the only one on the start list without children who's set to lead the Iron Kids uh, race. So we're off to do that now as my volunteer duties for Iron Man. And uh, yeah, off we go. <laughs> All right, it is midday now. Just uh, hung out at home for a couple hours, made myself five pancakes. I'm just doing uh, yeah, big old carbo load today. So I'm having Haribo, Rice Krispies, um, pancakes, cinnamon raisin bagels, sports drinks, stuff like that. And uh, I got my run bag here now and I'm walking into T2 to drop this stuff off and then off to the pro briefing. Finish the pro briefing. I think those things just, yeah, they kind of take forever. And uh, everyone, no one asked any questions today, so everyone played nice. But um, we're in the car now. We're heading out to the lake area. Um, I'm gonna do a one hour bike ride with a couple three minute intervals just to open up the body. It's, yeah, approaching two o'clock here. And I just figured I'd show you what I'm kind of working on today. I've got my bag here worth of all my carbs. So as I mentioned, I'm snacking away. I've got my my bagels, I've got my Rice Krispie treats, I've got my Haribo, I've already polished off one bag of these, and then um, I've got my pretzels, my Rolls Gold. So, you know, just gotta hit the basics, and uh, I don't really count how many grams I'm having, but my guess is probably gonna be in the range of seven to 800 grams. Um, yeah, so we're plowing it in today, but I don't want to feel too full. I feel like I've messed that up before where I'm like really trying to force it down and I end up feeling like, okay, wow, I've eaten too much food. So I'm just trying to like eat a normal amount of food, but have it be very carbohydrate rich. Alrighty then. That's uh, final workout done before the race. Hour ride with five by three minutes, kind of around 3.30 to 3.50. All felt like super easy <laughs> and that's how you want to feel the night before the race so the sun is just about to set over the mountains there and uh, yeah just really looking forward to tomorrow all right this just took way too long it took like an hour to rack the bike because there's five stages you have to like rack your bike rack your helmet get your chip go wash your wetsuit in a chlorinated solution because of some sort of sea mussel or something. And now I'm going back to transition because I forgot my Garmin on and it's yeah, on my bike. Tracks. And this dude wants to be in the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna try and, and do this and try to uh, remain as positive as possible, but I will, yeah, I'm just gonna run you guys through the day first. We'll start there. I'm gonna try and make this a super short version because it wasn't great. Start with that. <laughs> um, as you can tell in the footage leading up to the race, I was feeling quite good. Like I've had six really solid weeks of training. I felt like everything was pointing in the right direction for me to actually have a decent result. I feel like this year I've been consistently on the back foot, whether it's been injury stuff, health stuff, psychological stress i just feel like i i felt like the whole year i could not get my footing in training nor on the race course and i felt like finally i had five decent weeks of rhythm and flow and um yeah working with my new coach david i felt like it was really kind of like starting to click and i i felt good and i felt like i had enough evidence in training to indicate that i was ready for a decent performance and so yeah i um got to indian wells everything really went smoothly travel wise and pre-race wise like i wasn't feeling like amazing like i was jumping out of my skin but i didn't feel bad either. It wasn't like I had any indications that I was, um, you know, going to be preparing for a challenge out there or a tough day. I really felt like I was going to be in the mix. Um, and by no means am I under the illusion that I'm like the best 70.3 guy in the world, but I really thought that I was like going to be able to execute my race plan. Um, and so, yeah, race morning, yeah, a bit of a hectic race just in terms of the logistics. You probably saw some of that uh, yesterday when we were, uh, yeah, getting everything organized. But yeah, I, I did a little like 10 minute jog warm up in the morning. That felt all right. Got in the water, 58 degrees, felt cold for the first two or three minutes. Did about 10 minute warm up. Also, again, felt okay. I mean, I felt cold, but I didn't feel like bad. It's not like I felt terrible. And then started the swim uh, on the far right, but right next to Matt Sharp. And I've raced Matt a couple times. Like he's an exceptional swimmer. I train with him a decent amount and I feel like I can usually get on his feet and I've done that in a couple races. And so my hope was like, I'd line up next to Matt. 
I'd jump right on his feet, he'd tow me to the front of the race. Okay, cool, swim box ticked. And immediately, like, Matt just took right off, totally couldn't stay on his feet. Like, it was just a matter of him being so much faster than me off the line. And then I was in the fray, and I felt like I was, like, 40 guys deep. It was 65 guys on the start line. I felt like I was way at the back. So I swung far left, surged my way back onto the back of the main pack by the first buoy, which was probably, like, four or 500 meters in. Um, and then, yeah, I got to that first buoy, and right as we hung that right, the front pack kind of, like, got away the first maybe probably 10 guys or whatever. And so I was stuck in that second pack. Um, sitting like second or third and then um, we started you know making our way through the course and from there like I just was really struggling to stay onto that second chase pack which is a place where I usually am like either I'm fighting really hard to stay on the front front like with a guy like Matt or Canute or whatever or I'm like very in control in that second chase group and this felt like 10 out of 10 so immediately I was kind of like yeah in fight or flight mode just trying to like survive the swim um got on the bike or got through um got through the swim and, and ran through the transition to get to my bike and T1 was totally fine like no issues there technically or whatever um I got I got my suit over my shoulders and put my big arrow fairing in my chest and grabbed my nutrition off we went and immediately got on the bike kind of in no man's land. Like I could see some guys up the road. It was a real long straight away. I felt like that was the, the front pack. I could see the motos and stuff blinking away up there and um, immediately started pushing decent power. Like I was pushing probably like 320 to 330 and feeling not good. I just felt like my legs just could not turn over. Like I was just trying to, it's one of those things where like I was in between two gears. Like I would shift up and it would be too high cadence. I would shift down, it'd be too low cadence and the power just felt super forced, but like the power was there. It was, you know, in the 330s and I was like, okay, cool. I just got to keep keep working away here, and then, um, like, yeah, I, I I kept plugging away, and um, yeah, I just wasn't making any headway on the on the front guys, and so yeah, I got a little bit not discouraged. I, I I stuck in it, but I was like, all right, let me wait for Sam and Jackson to come through. Um, those guys ultimately did. I think it was mile 14, and then I rode with them for just over 10 minutes at 360 watts, and it just like, they just wore me down. Like they were just stronger. I mean, I felt bad, but they were just like, it was just too much effort for me. Um, and it wasn't like I was sitting there saying like, oh, this is too much effort. Like it just like, they just rode away. And so, yeah, that was a bit frustrating and kind of hung in there for a little bit. But then the third chase pack, I guess on the road or the main bunch kind of came through and um, like all those guys were sitting so close. They were sitting like five meters in between each other and they were all like surging and coasting. And I just got like, yeah, I psychologically kind of lost it at that point because I was like feeling like crap. And like these guys are all cheating and I try to raise with so much integrity and fairness. And so I was just like, ah, oh, it was one of those moments where I'm like yelling at the guys to stop drafting. And that's not me. I know that's taking away from my energy, but like it was just so frustrating to me. And then um, put in this big surge to try and drop them, which off of the efforts that I had done in the first hour, like didn't go anywhere. And then the final hour of the bike was just like so bad. Yeah, so bad. Like no legs, no power, riding like crap mentally just so like yeah defeated and like hating life out there um and I, yeah, I was like pushing like 250 watts and it felt like i was going threshold like i was just so smoked and so yeah i got on the um on the run and i was determined to finish the race like the year's just been so bad that i was like you know what i, I just dnf maryland i'm like not finishing a race really really feels bad like that's the lowest that you can go and so i was like all right well even if this is like last place i'm just gonna at least try and finish the thing and so got out there and uh, I didn't even care about what place I was in. Felt pit terrible for like five miles and then had like a little good patch for maybe like, I don't know, maybe like four to eight or something where I was like, I had like a 530 mile in there and I was like, okay, cool, I'm rolling. And then mile nine, adding insult to injury, like the run course is very technical and hard. I went up this like little golf course path hill and I pulled my right calf. So I don't know, it's like sort of touch right now. So we'll have to see if that ends up being any injury or any issue, but um just awful day terrible day like i'm so disappointed in in myself um i'm so disappointed in the season I, I feel like i'm losing my my confidence and my faith and in my ability to actually be competitive in these things and i'm like yeah i don't know it's just it's when you have a bunch of failures in a row and you just feel like you can't get your footing like you just scratch your head a little bit like am i am i overtrained am i undertrained am i doing the right things nutritionally am i recovering like is my training right is like what's you just you just don't know and like i just feel so helpless um when i've had these these races because like i'm so passionate and i feel like i invest so much of my time and energy and like i'm so motivated and i just like i love the sport but like having done it next year um, will be my 11th year racing as a pro 
and I don't know, it just grinds you down a little bit. And um, yeah, it's just been a tough time with like, yeah, not performing to my potential, losing sponsors, like feeling the pressure to provide and the pressure to survive and like all of these things. It's just, I feel like the world's kind of crashing down on me a little bit. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's there's nothing else you can do. Like I'm 30 years old. I've made my bed. Like I'm a professional triathlete. Like this is my job. I have to sort this out. And so as much as it's raw right now and it, I want to just quit and give up, like what do you do? You have to keep going. And so um, I'm going to try and stick to my word on that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a couple of days off and go see my grandparents in New Jersey and then figure out what my next moves are. But really appreciate everyone tuning into this video. Um, I'm going to try and be more positive going forward. I, I feel like this is a positive enough um, video given how negative I potentially could be. But <clears throat> I think we're all going to have hard days and we're all going to need to kind of find another layer to keep pressing through. And I think when you're down and out, that's when you really have to find like your next gear to just keep pressing. And so like I'm going to be searching for that in the next week or two and just try to find a way to just keep going and just keep going, even when it just feels like you, you are just fighting a losing battle and you're climbing up Mount Everest. But, um, I, yeah, I've been down and out before and, and hopefully, you know, things start turning my way here soon and just keep showing up doing the work. Like that's, what's gotten me all the success I've had to this point And hopefully that's, what's going to get me out. So, um, show me some love in the comments, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. If you're not, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.